Today we're going to be installing the Gearhead RC Rear Shock Relocation Kit on my Axial SCX-10 crawler. This moves the shocks from a vertical orientation to an upside down V orientation. And the reason we're going to be doing this is I would like to eventually remove the stock shock hoops so that I can put a more scale body on and have much more room in the back, which you cannot have with the shock hoops in place. So here we have Today we're going to be making another modification to my Axial SCX-10 uh, Tamiya body Toyota Tundra Alaska Mountain Rescue themed crawler. And what we're going to be doing today is installing the Gearhead shock relocation kit. And what this kit does is it remounts the rear shocks into a pyramid or an upside down V shape pattern. So I've already removed all of our mounting screws that are holding the body on and holding the bumper on, so we'll take all of those out, set those off to the side. Now this is going to require that we change around how our electronics are mounted, so we'll have to take care of that afterwards, but I do want to show you how this works. My electronics are mounted just sitting in a box that's held in place between uh, the rear shock hoops, and we can reuse the rear shock hoops if we wish, uh, but because of where the V-mount sits, this box actually isn't going to work for me anymore, so I'm going to need to relocate it. But for now, we can just simply take it out, and we'll set it up here in the front. There's a number of different things that we're going to have to do to install this kit. Uh, first of all, we're going to have to remove the stock battery tray. We're going to be removing the shocks from the front mounts, installing new braces here, and in our center brace that the shock hoops go through, we're going to actually have to drill two new holes. The first thing I'm going to do though is take off the wheels. This will give us better access to our rear shock lower mounting points. Now, the wheel nuts that I'm using are made by Rogue Elements, and they represent a scale hub. Um, if you're not familiar with Rogue Elements, they make one-off production pieces, and in order to get these pieces. You can't buy them on a website. You have to join the mailing list and they will announce that they're going to be making a certain piece. So you pre-order yours and those who pre-order get the item. After those items are sold, no more are made ever again. In some rare circumstances they have made another run of the same item, but it does not happen very often. Okay, so first we're going to remove our battery mounting tray. Next we need to remove the rear bumper and both of the shock hoops. So in order to do that we need to remove both screws for the shock hoops. And once we have those, we can slide out our rear bumper, and we can slide out our center brace. Now you'll notice the center brace actually has two holes almost pre-drilled here on each side. And those holes are used to hold on to our plastic chassis uh, servo mount. Now you notice that our stock X brace here has two holes on one side there and there. We're going to be drilling those holes all the way through and reusing them. If we look at the other side there aren't any, it's just a channel all the way across. Next we can remove the shocks from the lower mount. Our kit comes with some very simple parts. The first is our upper shock mount, and then we have two lower shock mounts which are going to wrap over the top of the axle and down the back side, and a bag with some screws and some lock nuts on. The next thing we're going to want to do is remove the shocks from the stock axial shock hoops. 
So, the next thing we're going to do is find some spacers that are the same width as our original bottom shock eyelets. Uh, you can use additional eyelets if you have any, or you can go ahead and find an aluminum spacer in your spares bin like I have. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you can use a stack of washers if you have to. But we need to put those in so that we can keep our bottom links in their correct positions. So we're going to go ahead and put that back together now. Okay, now that we have our lower links remounted again, we've gone ahead and pre-assembled our upper mount by mounting the upper mount to the X-brace and mounting our upper screws, which is what's going to hang the upper links for the shocks. We're going to slide that back into place here. And we've also gone ahead and pre-assembled our lower link or our lower shock mounts. Now we're going to mount our lower brackets to the rear axle. Now the lower shock mounts from Gearhead RC actually have two sets of holes on them. And depending on which set of holes you use to mount the bracket to the axle depends on what shock angle you wind up having. So you can have a steeper or a shallower angle. As you can see I've mounted the rear wheels again. And this is because we've already got our links mounted in the back. And it just makes it a little bit easier having everything up. We can roll a little bit if we need to. And at this point, all we need to do is to lift our frame up and down to be able to get the right angles and, and put things in place with our shocks. So I'm going to take our first shock and put that on. second one. And there you have it. We've reinstalled the axial stock shock hoops for now. Uh, if you use these as your body mounting system, they can stay in place. It's not a problem. It's designed to do that. Uh, we have our upper mount with our shocks mounted, our lower mount with our shocks mounted, and our links with our spacers. As you can see, it sits a little bit high in the back, and that's because these are not the stock axial shocks. These are a shock that I got very cheaply from Hobby King, and they work well in the stock vertical position, but not so well in this angled position. But that's okay, because in our next video build of this truck, we're going to be replacing these with a more scale-style looking shock, and that will resolve all of these problems. So now all the parts are in place, and as I mentioned, there are a few things that I have left to do. First, I need to change over to a different electronics box, a smaller one, as with the new upper brace, there isn't as much room as there was before. And in the next episode, we're going to be changing over to a different set of more scale-looking shocks that will take care of the issue with the rear end currently being a little bit too high.